I'm just going to show you the basics of a DIY irrigation system. Hello, I'm Blake, a professional innovator and designer in pursuit of the invisible smart home. Water leak alert. Um, so here's my setup here. I built this manifold for the first part of my system. Um, and I've just got three of our uh, OEM versions of the Bulldog in there with the Z-Wave controllers. Before I get to how I put this together and the components and parts, I just wanted to show you a bit how the, uh, the system will be set up to, uh, to irrigate the property. Alright, so part of the system just takes standard uh, three-quarter garden hose and it's going to hook to a drip system. And the drip system goes up the... Uh, east side of my garden you know, with a pool in it and so on and you know you can put various attachments for the drip system and you can even reach them into pots if you want to and then the front has a I just put a regular uh, sprinkler well not a regular sprinkler but a sprinkler up here and I'll show you that later but you can see it there that just does a nice whatever rotation I set it to and that's mounted in the ground there and I'm adding one on the other side of the garden here and I wanted to have a hose so that uh, you know like a maintenance hose so you could you know just do it by hand or whatever you want we got to water this uh, staghorn up there so I'm using uh, drip irrigation on one side of the property here and I'm just going to turn it on and show you a couple of the this thing it's hard to see, but you spin in there. So I'm going to hide this tube mostly, but you can see it has its little sprinklers. And that's supporting this hole on one side of the property. Something I didn't uh, consider is that uh, the system might be tampered with by uh, my dog, Birdie. Chewed up a few of these things, but uh, hopefully she's gotten bored with them. And you can run tubes up into plants. You can see that here. I got a tube running up in there. So that's what I call the drip irrigation. And it's from uh, Mr. Landscaper. And there's a dozen or so different ways to spread the water around. And for the front front of the property, I've fixed a couple of these 360 uh, sprinklers where you can set them to rotate and then there's different settings of how you want the uh, the water to come out and stream or spray let's just turn that on all right so that's doing its thing and you can play around there's like four or five or six settings in there so you can make sure you get the maximum and appropriate coverage going to cover the uh, basics of how you put together this pipe or manifold I guess. This is my first try and I didn't like the spaces that I had here so you really do have to measure the, uh, you know, the distance so that when you push these pieces together it uh, you know it's nice and tight like I have here. Also in this case I could have put an L or a, um, an elbow here but instead I brought this out so that if I wanted to add another channel in the future or another zone, I could do that relatively easily. Um, I just used a simple cutter um, to do this and then there's two compounds, one to clean it and one's the adhesive. I'm not gonna cover all those details. You can just go online. There's lots of uh, good videos that show you how to put this stuff together. PVC plumbing, if you haven't done it before. Another point, I did this with one inch. I would probably do uh, three quarter inch if I was to do it again in the future. I think I picked one inch just because I had some one inch valves uh, laying around when I did it. But, um, you know, three quarter, at least for my size of property, uh, three quarter uh, plumbing is fine for the irrigation system. All right, so let me just, just show you a couple things and I'll screw this together and you can see how it uh, works. So I'm just going to approximate this it needs to be about um, needs to be about this is about a one inch insert space and then you need one inch for the other side this device doesn't cut it completely square 
that gives you the idea. And then you would just glue that in there and add your, add your valve. So I'll go ahead and put this together here with these components and you can see how it works. Okay, so I've added this silicon tape here, 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 and here. I'm not clear you actually need to, specifically when you have um, copper going to PVC, because uh, they're supposed tapered and I think they're supposed to be like a self-sealing with the taper, gradually uh, sealing the position. Uh, maybe less so with copper to copper, but even then I think that they're supposed to be self-sealing. I, I did a quick uh, check and it's a little unclear to me, so just to be safe I'm putting it on there, it's not going to hurt anything. So let's just uh, start screwing this together. This one's already installed, so I don't have to worry about this one. This is the OEM version. Um, I would just remember when you get to putting this on, I'm going to show you that in a minute. When you get to put that on, just plug it in first because uh, it's a little harder to, to tight to plug it in. So let's just start screwing this together. Nice and tight and it works out. I want to stop it parallel with the top. And this is a one inch NPT male to three quarter inch garden hose male. This is NPT uh, female to three quarter inch garden hose um, male. And this is gonna be the adapter to just change it to female so I can use the standard connection. Extra snug with the wrench. Now this goes on. This has the gasket built into it, doesn't need the tape. I will uh, add a couple valves over top of these valves. So, something to note here is you have to get these things straight, and sometimes the thread tightening doesn't line up with the straightness with the, the valve because you know you want these things standing up. Um, you can cheat a bit by adding more silicon tape. But what I did, just to prove you can, I've taken off the valve handle on this one and flipped it around, and that happened to work out to make it uh, tight and uh, level at the same time. Okay, let's get a couple motor assemblies and put them on there. Removed the uh, units from here and rotated them, and I'm going to mount them here with a couple of zip ties so I have more room to get the uh, thing mounted and the cables connected. Probably could put some double-sided tape underneath there too. All right, let's get another uh, motor assembly mounted, and I'll just put the HC two XL version of the mount on there. That's the larger of two that comes in a kit, and you just got to make sure you line up the. Uh, slot with the center of the valve. Let's get that going. The screw should be kind of mostly even on each side in terms of the small gap that's going to be here. So you just get it a little bit tight and you make sure you line it up and then you can finish tightening it. So it's starting to tighten up. Let's As you can see, it might be tight to get this other one in here, so I probably should have left more spaces between these, uh, maybe added an inch or two between these, so these were spread out a bit to make it easier to mount it, but let's uh, see if we can make it work. Let's add, set, and secure the pin kit that uh, pushes the valve open and close. All right, so I installed. Everything seems to be uh, working out okay. Let's see if he has enough, there's enough room for the stroke there. And I'm going to add the AC adapter 12 volt 
And I'm going to cheat a little bit by using these splitters. And I'm just going to use one power supply. Normally you wouldn't be able to do that because they could all run at the same time. But in an irrigation system, you only run, um, you know, one at a time. So a single adapter will do it because it'll be sharing power to each one at a time. And in the standby mode, you know, one amp power supply is plenty. And uh, it's only going to draw the three or hundred amps or milliamps or so when it needs to per unit, not all at the same time. So this is also going to be good enough. So let's uh, plug in the uh, splitters that I have times two. Let's turn it back. Let's give this one a try. Oh, even at the same time. Two at the same time. Kind of cheating there. Probably shouldn't do that normally because of the way the power supply is set up. Let's just see if that works out okay. Alright, I should probably move this cable around, which I will do. This cable over here. Put it where it's supposed to go. In there. Alright, let's try this one. That's the one with the integrated valve. Got to add that I'll put that in all right so I've got everything the hard part done and the mechanics so all I need to do now is add the uh, an input connection here with a hose and then uh, I can add the three uh, output connections here and I'll be all set um, of course I'm using the three-quarter garden hose but you could put whatever adapters you needed to adapt to your, if you have an existing irrigation system, if it used one inch PVC or three quarter inch PVC or whatever it is, there'd be adapters available to hook that up as well. Now I just need to pair it to my smart things and I'll just do a little test to here and show it uh, working. Here's your irrigation system. Um, as I said, I have it hooked up to a uh, 12 volt AC adapter with a splitter, but if your irrigation system uses uh, 24 volts, you can get a 12 to uh, or a 24 volt to 12 volt adapter and add that so you don't have to, you can use your existing irrigation system power supply. Um, I've paired it to my uh, smart things and I've got the, uh, so now I've got six zones from my previous three. And I'll just show a couple of them opening and closing here. Zone 4. Hit it with my phone. And as I said, you should only do one at a time anyway. Uh, so I get in the way with the uh, one power supply. So you can open and close the water at will. And one thing that I've done while it's finishing its stroke here, I've, um, in the uh, like legacy version of uh, Smart Things before they came out with these edge, drive, edge drivers, I'm not sure how I set it up, but there was a utility to, um, like a power monitoring utility, which I've set up to my first three zones of the, uh, the Bulldog uh, irrigation controller. So after 20 minutes, it always automatically turns off. I don't have to worry about it. So when I turn these on manually with my phone or, or just go push the button on the uh, controller, um, it'll turn off after 20 minutes. Although I do set a schedule for each one to come off and on at 20 minutes, the, uh, the power monitor is just a backup uh, feature. And let's just run zone five, make sure it works. So basically I, I made some mechanical adjustments to uh, test strokes and everything's working fine now. And all I have to do is uh, go out and uh, you know connect it to my existing pipes out there and I'm going to add these uh, three zones. Alright so I've tidied this up a bit by uh, burying the hose. You can't see it. And I'm gonna that with the other uh, the hose with the drip irrigation you can see the different settings on here 
All right, so now I have a six zone irrigation system. I'm not sure why you can see that in this lighting. And I can set schedules and manage it with my phone. And let's just turn one on so you can see it uh, work here. All right, so in conclusion, um, I don't think this is for everybody. It's a quite a project to put something like this together, and it's certainly not less expensive than a typical irrigation uh, controller, but it includes the, uh, the valves or the manifold, the manifold and the valves. And it's a good choice if you have a Z-Wave or Zigbee Smart Home or any smart home where you have your own hub, like Smart Things or Home Seer or Hubitat. I think it's a good choice. So give me a thumbs up. Look for my next video and please subscribe. Cheers.